right, we're here today with Malcolm Wild. He's the senior pastor of Calvary Chapel, Merritt Island. Been there since uh, 1984, mm-hmm. originally from England, mm-hmm. and um, was our guest speaker today. Taught on Psalm 61. Mm-hmm. What, a, what an amazing uh, story about mm-hmm. your parents. So yeah. growing up, obviously your parents were not, not believers. believers. But they were good people. You know, they were not, uh, you know, they were decent people, but... Every, everybody there, you know, they thought if they've, you're in England, you think you're a Christian or you think, well, I'm Church of England, you know. Right. What religion? I Church of England. But, <laughs> but I yeah. had no idea what it meant to be saved up until I was 20, 20 years old. Wow. No, actually 21 years old before I knew anything, 21, 22. Well, you're, never heard the gospel. Never heard the gospel. But your, your roots as a young person were in England. Yeah. And kind of the music world, right? And you ended up in several bands, and then yep, yep. started one with your brother-in-law. Yeah, well, I was in a band, and my friend Alwyn, uh, he, our lead guitarist, quit, and so this this 50, we heard about this fifteen-year-old kid who lived in the town. He had a little funky band, and so we <laughs> took him from that band, put him in our band, All right. and he was really, really good, and so. That's how I first got to know Alwyn. But when that band broke up, we started a, a duo together yeah, so, before we were Christians. So you guys were right in the middle of the era of the Beatles, the Beatles time, right, and that, right. that whole thing. Right. And, and in England. Right. In <laughs> fact, one of the reasons our lead guitarist left and Alwyn came in was we had an opportunity to go to Germany as a band, the uh, same place where the Beatles yeah. were there for 10 years or whatever they were. And we had the opportunity to go there, and the the guy who was the lead, he didn't want to go. And so by the time Alwyn came in, uh, that opportunity had gone, but thank God. I <laughs> don't know what would have happened if I'd yeah. have gone there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so from that early musical career, you kind of, you and Alwyn came to the Lord at the same time, or how'd that happen? Alwyn came to the Lord two days after me, because me and Carol got saved, and of course, He's married to Carol's sister, Gloria. Right. So we went, as soon as we got saved, we went to tell them. See, we've been doing everything together. We'd been, you know, transcendental meditation, talking about life and right. writing songs nice. about life and what it's all about and everything. So it was a natural thing for us to go tell sure. them. Yeah. So we went to tell them. And two days later, they went to the church where the guy who led us to the Lord was the pastor. We'd never even been to his church, but... Two days later, after us getting saved, they went with us to his church, and they got saved. That's amazing. So so in your wildest dreams, you would have never, ever dreamed that um, you and Alan would become pastors one no. day. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I knew that I, I knew him almost immediately that God called me mm. to serve. The, I wanted to be in the ministry. Wow. But I felt like I was an evangelist, and I did a lot of witnessing, mm-hmm. uh, at the factory that I worked at, and uh, I I thought that God had called me as an evangelist, and and but it was evangelism, you know, with the music. Yeah, yeah. We never, me and Alwyn, never looked upon ourselves just as musicians. We felt like we were used. We used the platform to proclaim the gospel. Yeah, I I, I think I've mentioned this to you before because we've known each other for a long time. I was listening to some of your recordings mm-hmm. as a young Christian. And you guys had a line in one of your songs, uh, got myself some wisdom from a leatherback book, mm-hmm. got myself a savior when mm-hmm. I took a second mm-hmm. look. <laughs> what, mm-hmm. what, what an amazing, amazing uh, lyric. Right. Yeah. And and it happens to people. Yep, yep. You know, yep. They, they start thinking, wow, the, the Bible, you know, yep. it's got yep. wisdom in it. Yep. But the true wisdom of the Bible is God speaks right. to you about his Absolutely. son. Absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing. See, when I, uh, there was a fellow at my work was witnessing to me, um, uh, well, he wasn't. Re- I, he was a Baptist feller, and I had to kind of prize out of him. I, I kept asking him questions about God right. and Jesus and whatever, yeah. and he gave me a book to read. Hmm. And in the middle of that book, it said, "Put down this book now and read the Gospel of John." Hmm. So I read the Gospel of John, and I it I didn't get it. I didn't wow. get Jesus. I yeah. thought, "Who is this guy? Who do you think he is? God?" You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you read it as a non-believer, and, and sure. you, you think, look at the claims he's making, yeah. 
and it kind of blew me away. And and I I uh, and then when I got saved, of course, pastor said, "Read the Gospel of John." John. I just yeah. read it. Well, read it again. <laughs> read it again. And it was totally different. Oh yeah, totally different. Totally different. You know, now now I knew uh, I knew Jesus. Yeah, and he was That's Savior. Awesome. So you you got saved, came into your Christian music career, so to mm -hmm. speak. You and Alan traveled all over America mm -hmm. doing music, and then you ended up, I think, after that on staff with Pastor Chuck yeah. Smith. Yeah. Now, how did that right. happen? Well, the 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 when I was after me and Alan broke up, I I worked for, or I was ministering with a group of people called Musical Gospel Outreach. They were the ones that put, recorded me and Alwyn initially, okay. but they were putting bringing Maranatha bands over to England. Uh -huh. So the the guys from California, uh, Chuck Butler with, with Parable, Gentle Faith, I remember those guys. Uh, different different bands, Karen Lafferty, Eric Nelson. I set up tours for them in in England after. Because I knew a lot of people in England, sure. having toured there for several years with Alwyn, I knew a lot of people, and so I could set up tours for these guys. And I got to know the people from California. Of course, we'd already been to right. Costa Mesa years before, uh, me and Alwyn doing concerts there. And uh, I got to know Chuck Fromm, who was the head of Maranatha Music at that time. Mm. And he said, we got a load of musicians. We have a musician's fellowship. We want somebody to pastor the musician's fellowship pass to the musicians. So that's basically what they invited me to do is to come to America and pass to the musicians, which uh, first of all, I was I was on staff with Maranatha Music. Okay. Then after six months, they moved me over to the church and I went on Chuck's staff as a, as a you know, pastor. One just, of a assistant. Yeah, just a regular assistant pastor. Yeah, just a regular assistant pastor. I was still doing the mus Musicians Fellowship. Right. I did that for about six years or so. Wow, and so you 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 did that you, and I and I know that at that time frame, in Chuck's ministry, it was probably just going bonkers. I mean, the yeah. growth and yeah. the the affiliates of churches that yeah. wanted to yeah. come and be a part. It was yeah. Probably, I think the the outreach church, you know, the churches going out from Chuck started yeah. around about that time. Yeah. You know, Mike went down to San Diego, and Joe, of course, went out to Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and uh, Philadelphia and. Probably John Corson and Corson, yeah. um, Greg Laurie, yeah, Greg, Greg of course uh, started the church in Riverside and mm -hmm. things like that. Alwyn actually at once upon a time was on Greg's staff there. Oh wow, for a Didn't while. Know that. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And so so things are going bonkers there at Costa Mesa. Calvary Chapel is starting to become a, a not only just national but worldwide kind mm -hmm. of movement. Mm -hmm. And you end up in Merritt Island, Florida. <laughs> Merritt Island, yeah. So how in the world does a yeah. guy from England yeah. end up in Merritt from California? Well, I'd, I'd, been, I'd been there uh, about seven and a half years at Costa Mesa. I had no intentions of leaving. Uh, sure. I don't know whether Chuck wanted me to leave. Maybe he did because he usually <laughs> kicked guys out the door. You right. know? It, 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 at that era, he, he mm -hmm. wasn't really into keeping everybody. He wanted them to go out yeah. and and get their training and then go out and serve. But I was quite happy. In fact, I started a missions ministry at Costa Mesa, oh, which wow. was pretty mm. new. Didn't really have any missions ministry. We started with Paul Smith, uh, mm -hmm, Chuck's brother. brother. And we'd got a thing going there and it was it was really exciting about, you know, different people come in and speak and it, it was pretty cool. Mm. But then I was walking by, one day I was walking by the office uh, where, where, you know, people would call Calvary, Costa Mesa. They'd say, hey, we've got some people here yeah. in wherever listening to Chuck, and can you send us a pastor? Mm -hmm. Well, I was walking by the door of John Hilton, who was the guy who, he, he was the guy who took care of phone calls like that. Okay. I'm walking by his office door, and he goes, Malcolm, there's some people here calling from Florida. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> and he's, you know, he's, he's handing me the phone. I'm saying, I don't want it. I'm handing it back. You know, I don't want to oh. talk to him. As I pick the phone up. And there's a fellow on the phone. His name was Charlie Carroll. He actually got saved at the Maranatha movie night. They used to have movies on it at Costa Major on Friday night, I think it wow. was. So I'm I'm speaking to him, and he says, 
yeah, we're looking for a pastor here, and uh, how would you like to come out and talk to the people here and see whether... I said, uh, I'm not interested in going to Florida. And then he says to me, yeah, there's a lot of boats here, and do you like fishing? Do you like water? I went, oh, yeah? Fishing, water, boats? I love that kind of stuff. And, yeah. he, and I thought to myself, well, I'll just go. Yeah, and have a, <laughs> I've never been to Florida before. Yeah. I'll go to Florida, have a good old time. We'll go fishing. I'll speak at their church, and you yeah. know, I'll be all right. Well, I, I said, okay, I, I'll come. And uh, and then after when I hung up, I got busted. God just busted me. He said, don't you dare yeah. go to that place just to think you can go for the weekend and speak and have mm. a good time and not even consider yeah. The fact that not fair to them, right? No, yeah. not fair to them, right? And I, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. So, so I'll go and I'll 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 be open. And so we went and I I, I spoke the first Sunday there, and, and then the elders all met with me or whatever. It was a it was a little uh, it was called Cornerstone, and mm. it was they yeah. didn't know what they were. There was Baptists, there was Pentecostals, there was all kinds all of people up. all mixed up together, and they didn't really have an identity, mm. and. Uh, and they, they liked me, and they, they asked me to send for Carol. So Carol came. I spoke another week, and wow. then, and then uh, we went back to California. And <laughs> first thing, now nobody knew where I'd been or anything, but, uh, <laughs> except for Chuck and Romaine or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and I walked in the door, and there's this guy, one of the pastors working with the youth. He said, Malcolm, I had a dream about it. You went to Florida and you became a pastor there. Oh my there. gosh! Whoa! <laughs> okay, I better start and listen. Yeah, yeah. So eventually, in 1984, yeah, in January 1984, we 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 moved out to to Florida yeah. to pastor that church. So you're you're pretty. Um, I mean, your teaching style. You're 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 very relatable. You mm -hmm. storyteller as well as mm -hmm. an expositor, and. Um, but you, you worked in a factory, mm -hmm. and you were a I musician. Did, yeah, so, that was my day job. <laughs> so this kind of teaching skill, uh, yeah. where would you say that came from? Just from doing it, being under Chuck. I mean, obviously he models that for mm -hmm. all of us. But I, I don't think I'd be in the ministry as a pastor teacher had not been for Chuck Smith. Mm -hmm. I think I learned that through him. But it, I, I don't know what you feel about this, John. But I think like. I look back on my life now. I know God was preparing me even before I I became a Christian. Mm -hmm. Before I be, I don't know. I'm not sure. I the, theologically, I don't know how to what to make of it. Uh, you know, you're more of a theologian than me, whatever. But you might be able to help <laughs> me here. But but I, I I when I was young, I recited poetry. Mm -hmm. I was I won awards from my school. I was in drama. I was in a rock and roll band, right. and I wasn't a great singer. But but I but I I knew how right. to you know relate to an audience, mm -hmm. and so so when I got saved, there was still there was there was something there that God had already given me, mm -hmm. but of course I had no idea how to teach the Bible or anything like right. that. Although when it, before I came to Costa Mesa, I lived in a little town called Shaftesbury in Dorset, and I was teaching a home study there, but I really didn't know what I was doing much. But when I met Chuck, yeah, that's what changed. So, even from your youth, you had this kind of lyrical, mm -hmm. poetic mm -hmm. kind of gifting yep. that you yep. wanted to express in yep. some way. Yep, and we wrote songs. Me and I yeah, wrote songs sure. before we were Christians. We tried to get famous writing songs. And <laughs> took them to Apple, you know, Beatle, oh, wow. the Beatles yeah, thing, yeah. and. Uh, not Apple computers, Apple music. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they turned us down. But yeah. Well, I'm sure they were getting flooded in those days. With Well, it was, you know, uh, the Beatles started that uh, Apple thing mm -hmm. to find young talent. Okay. They were looking for young talent. Okay. Wow. And uh, we met George Harrison, and he got us an appointment with the guy who who uh, was heading that up. But he didn't like our music. He wanted more poppy stuff. We were more like... Dylan, you know, writing yeah. songs, protest songs, and he, 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 the guy running that thing wasn't interested in that. He wanted, you know, poppy kind yeah. of things. So, so you've been um, in ministry now, at least. Well, let's just say in Florida since '84. Yeah, and um, seven years in seven and a half years in California before that. Yeah, so, but you have the wonderful, uh, I guess, testimony of 
you and your wife, Carol, got saved together. We did. I mean, what an awesome yeah. thing. There wasn't any of that, well, no, she's not a Christian, no, I am. You no. came to the Lord together, yeah. got in ministry together. Yeah. Yeah. And so you two have been doing ministry in Florida and, and in Costa Mesa as well. Yeah. Almost your whole married life. Yeah. Yeah. We we were married a, a year before we got saved. Mhm. Mm and it it was an amazing thing because you know the first the church we went to my, my friend is now is actually you know Howard Davies on staff yeah. with me. Well, he's the guy who first told me about Jesus. Wow. He was a van driver and he a truck driver used to come to the factory where I worked to start telling me amazing. about the Lord. And I would tell Carol, I'd tell Alwyn and, you know, whatever. But um, he told, invited me to his church, but his church was in another town about 10 miles away. I thought, I'm not driving 10 miles to go to church. I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, but there was one in our local, uh, our local town where we lived. Mm. So I said, I'll go there. And old Howard, you know, he, he was a little freaked out because he didn't know anybody there. Yeah. And he'd, he'd already said to me, somebody will meet you there and they invite you to tea and all the rest of it. You know? And it's... and then he went home and prayed with Dory. He said, I've, I've told Malcolm somebody's going to invite them or whatever. <laughs> and he says, I don't know anybody there or whatever. So Carol didn't want to go. She didn't want to go. She, I didn't know what was going on in her heart, but she was under tremendous conviction. Oh, wow. and, and I didn't know. She, I just thought she wasn't interested. So we go and uh, there's a, there's a, a visiting speaker, an evangelist there, not the regular pastor. His name was George Yeomans. Hmm. And he preached, and at the door, he grabbed us at the door, and he said, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? And we went, yeah. <laughs> we had no idea what he was talking about. It's like, what, what is he talking about? He's not. Wow. So he pulled us, he knew that we weren't saved, obviously. He pulled me and Carol aside into a, a side room. A woman spoke to Carol, and he's speaking to me. He's oh, wow. beginning to witness it to me. She, she's, and then they hear Carol say, I'm not a sinner, it's my husband you want to see. <laughs> and she turned her back on the, on the woman who oh, was wow. talking to her. And so they could see that we, they weren't getting anybody. So he said, why don't you come around to our place tomorrow for tea? There and you go. So, you know, God answered Howard's prayer. And wow. so we went, he had a college of evangelism in our town. We didn't know that. Interesting. And he was an evangelist and a pastor of another church in, a, in another town further away. And uh, he led us to the Lord the next day. I mean, here's the amazing thing. Carol wasn't interested, I thought, but she was just under conviction. And she, she said to me, I'm going to ask him all kinds of questions. I'm going to stump him. I'm going right. to throw, why did this, why that, yeah. why the other? And she didn't ask him one thing because he, he answered <laughs> it all. He one. answered all the questions she had yeah. in her mind before yeah. she even asked them. Mm -hmm. And when he said, she, she said, well, what must we do to be saved? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she asked that. She said that very line, and poor old George That's almost awesome. fell out of I his chair. Because <laughs> they didn't have converts, hardly ever. Wow. And, and, That's uh, great. And he was just crying, led us to the Lord. We That's knelt so on his great. floor in his, his office oh in his, his the school of evangelism there. And he, then he turned us over to a couple of the students that, you know, counseled us on mm -hmm. reading the Bible and okay. so, going to church, and whatever. So, so here you are, a, a guy in England. You're a factory worker. You're married. You get saved. You, you eventually become a pastor in Florida. You raise your kids in the church. You've done ministry your whole life with your wife, and and I, and I'm sure you would have never imagined, as you're working away in the factory, mm -hmm. what God had for you and what he's done in your life and all the places you've been, the people you've met, the experiences mm -hmm. you've had, amazing. all because of the Lord. Absolutely. Isn't it amazing? It's absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've been places and been with people that would have never been a part of Malcolm Wilde's no. life without Jesus absolutely. Christ. Absolutely. And here's an amazing thing. A few months ago, a guy wrote to me. And he's living in Orlando. Mm -hmm. His name's Pete. <laughs> it was in my band. <laughs> no, okay. before I got saved. In your band. Before I That's before amazing. we got saved, it was in the Zodiacs. And he and he's he's, <laughs> the he's Zodiacs. He, I got him. I got to get with him yet. But he's he said he's a Christian. Wow. And he he wrote to me and he says, I always knew God. He always said no. He says I always knew there's something special about your life. And that something. Yeah, he was the bass player in our band. That's amazing. Yeah. 
<laughs> it blew so, my mind because I went back and witnessed it. Some yeah, of my sure. Old band members. Uh huh. Yeah. So so let's 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 um, kind of wrap this up with this. You been a pastor for all these years. What would you say are um, some of the highlights of being a, a pastor? And then what are some of the difficult parts mm -hmm. of being a pastor? And, and you know, if you want, include your wife in that story mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. these, John, these are some of the high points mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what Lord's allowed me to do mm -hmm. as a pastor. And these are some of the things that you got to do, <laughs> you have yeah. to do as a yeah. pastor. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, there's heartaches, as you, as yeah. you know. There's always heartaches in the ministry and uh, people leaving. Yeah, um, sure. People you thought would never leave. Right. Leave. They either, occasionally there's some who just don't like you anymore and they leave or they fall out with you and they leave. That's right. the biggest heartache. But some of them just move. Right, You know, they sure. just move, move somewhere else or mm -hmm. whatever. And me and Carol, we, we look at, one another and we say you know what it's me you and the lord <laughs> yeah. that's what it is yeah you know people come and go and and, and uh, i've got a great staff and a great group of pastors yeah. and, and i love them but me and carol still say it's me yeah. and you yeah. and the lord because yeah. you just never know and and that's been a heartache sometimes is 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 that when people you love uh leave or even you know having been there a long time now I've lost some people who have gone to heaven. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, we had Mary Barrett, who was one of the greatest, or if not the greatest, worship leader I've ever known. Yeah, anointed musician, a special, special person. Sure. About ten years ago, eleven years ago, or so now went went to be with the Lord, and that was really, really hard. I'm sure. It was. And I will say, no, I won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> She was very special, and that period of time when she was doing music at our church was a very, very special time yeah, with was. albums and mm -hmm. producing albums. And that was some of the highlights, is is, is working with uh, people like Mary mm -hmm. and producing albums and, and uh, you know. But then seeing people come to the Lord, and then I had the privilege, which, which blows my mind to this day, the honor and the privilege of... of taking part in the memorial service for the astronauts that were killed. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. Okay, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah the, the, so you were connected to the yeah, Cape at that time? Yeah, in some way? and uh, Rick Husband uh, he came to our church. He was, he was the commander of, what was it? I get mixed up with this, Columbia. I think it was Challenger. Mm, yeah. And and uh, he, he'd come to our church um, and... They would use our facility, the astronauts would use our facility uh, for like the night before they, mm. they would have like a, a gathering of, okay. of family and wives and uh, like a, what they call it, just a, they have a meal and they, and, and they just gather together for like the night before. Like a potluck or something. Yeah, the night before uh, and they would want to use our facility. So they did that. The astronauts couldn't come. Obviously, it was just their wives and family. Right. And they would use, and they did that several times. Wow. And he came to our church a couple of times, and I've got actually in my office I have a, a, a plaque that he gave me from his first flight. Hmm. But then, and then, and they still, it, you could still find it online. I, I watched it a little while ago. Hmm. Uh, they're on the runway. Uh, you know, I gave a, a little benediction thing and a little scripture and prayer and whatever. Oh, wow. and, that was that was mind blowing. Here's a here's a guy from nowhere, England, yeah. <laughs> little little country town in England that nobody knows. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, high school education, uh, a nobody, <laughs> and here I am. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm speaking now. The governor of Florida is there. You know, the the all the astronauts and the the Amazing. wives and the yeah. big wigs are all there, and I'm closing this thing. Isn't that amazing? You know, and then the jets fly over. <laughs> so we put it on. Actually, put it on one of our praise albums. Wow. We put it at the end. The end. Yeah, yeah, the end. Yeah. My little speak and and cool. the and the jets flying over mm. and dedicated it to the crew. Wow. And this is this is after the 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 accident. Yeah. Accident. I think it was a Challenger, wasn't it? I believe it was. Yeah. Hey, that was well, Columbia that was, was the first one, right? Yeah, that, that was pretty up. traumatic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole world was watching yeah. when that yeah. thing exploded. Yeah. No, no, and the whole world watching the ceremony, and, I, and I'm thinking the whole world <laughs> here. I mean, Lord, yeah. 
And when they asked me to do it, you know, I didn't know, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? I only have a couple of minutes. What am I going to do? Yeah. And God gave me just this exactly what I needed awesome. to say. Dude. Yeah. And, it, and, and something like that, what a privilege, you know, what an honor. Yeah. The, nothing you let, nothing you could have ever orchestrated nothing you got orchestrated <laughs> or even dreamt of right and, and you know Lord, and who said the Christian life is boring <laughs> <laughs> I mean I want to be a Christian it's boring I mean my yes. life has been yeah exciting thrilling mm -hmm. not not without heartaches as right. I was saying today David had an exciting life but yeah. a lot of heartache and yeah. we've had heartache sure you know, nobody escapes that nobody escapes that but but you but you Compared to what the Lord gives you in life, oh, doesn't come. Don't doesn't comparison. Come, yeah. No, I mean, and, and what's to light come? Light affliction, <laughs> and what's to come? Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. So, so, um, right now, you're still pastoring Calvary right. Chapel, Merritt right. Island. Right. Uh, I know. I go down there several times a year, and mm -hmm. um, especially the conferences. Look forward right. to those every right. year. They're always powerful. Right. And uh, I, I remember the early days coming to those conferences uh, when your son Joel had the band mm -hmm. Exit, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just such a interesting thing when I first came in to come to your church and watch as Calvary Chapel mm -hmm. Florida was growing. Right, right. All these different guys, right. year after year after year right. after year, there was right. all these new right. pastors. And right. I can remember as either talking to you or someone on your staff back in the day when. They kind of transitioned everything from Costa Mesa affiliation mm -hmm. to regions. Regions. And I'd right. say, so Malcolm, how's it going? You say, well, we have a list about this stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah. of guys who want to be yeah. Yeah. Calvary's. And yeah. it's just been such a great family yeah. to be yeah. a part of. Yeah. And uh, I know for myself, I want to thank you for yeah. all your labor oh. and service in Florida. It's made a huge Florida. difference right. to our state. And uh, being a native Floridian, mm -hmm. I have a special... Uh, just place in my heart, heart for what Florida. God has yes, done absolutely. in our state. So, Malcolm Wilde, thank you so much oh, for being here. Most welcome. And thank God you and you. Carol for all you've done for oh. Calvary Chapels. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for having us.